Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, November 18th, 2018. We are still in Unit 3 and Lesson 12. Unit 3 is entitled, God Blesses and Recreates Regardless. Our lesson title from the Adult Quarterly is Finding Strength. Finding Strength. Our devotional reading is Psalm 42, verses 1 to 5. Our background scripture, which is also our printed text, is from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 22. Uh, from the uh, Adult Quarterly, the lesson aims or number one, consider how Jacob's vulnerable situation led him to an encounter with God. Number two, affirm that God's strength is made manifest in human weakness. Manifest meaning clearly seen. And then number three, resolve to make room in your lives for times of spiritual retreat. Resolve to make room in your lives for times of spiritual retreat. Uh, and our key verse, uh, we'll read through the entire passage shortly but the key verse is I am with you and I will bring you back to this land I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised Delph quarterly uh, lesson has three major divisions after the introduction the first is a vision in the night and that uh, is covered between Genesis 28 verses 10 and, and 15. Second division, a pillow becomes a pillar, a pillar such as a column. Uh, and that is covered between verses 16 and 19 of Genesis 28. And then the last division, a vow to change, covered between verses 20 and 22. Uh, from the standard, the lesson title is, the standard commentary, the lesson title is Jacob's Dream. And additional aims are, number one, tell what Jacob saw in his dream, what God told him, and how Jacob responded. Number two, compare and contrast how people memorialize things with how Jacob did or did so and then number three share with the class one way God has provided for him or her for us and uh, the standard outline has three major divisions as well the first is moving away covered between verses 10 and 15 of chapter 28 the second marking the place covered between verses 16 and 19, and the third, making a vow, and that's covered between verses 20 and 22. Last week, we, we studied um, how Jacob uh, and his mother, Rebecca, uh, this was instigated by his mother, Rebecca, conspired to trick Isaac out of... Uh, uh, into a rather blessing uh, Jacob instead of the eldest son Esau. Uh, they uh, pulled off a very clever scheme and although Isaac was pretty leery and questioned his senses, uh, ultimately was convinced that Jacob was the eldest son and blessed him. And um, uh, we know that afterwards Esau was furious when he found out that his brother had duped him a second time, cheated him out of his blessing, uh, the paternal blessing, uh, and uh, he vowed to kill his brother after his father died. Rebecca uh, heard uh, about his plans to kill Jacob and hatched another scheme to get Jacob out of town until hopefully... Esau's uh, anger was assuaged and uh, she, so she went to Isaac and 
uh, told him that she was really concerned that uh, Jacob might take a wife from among the Canaanites as Esau had, and she really didn't want him to do that. And of course, Isaac um, agreed with her he should not take a wife from among the Canaanites. Uh, if you recall, uh, back in verse, I'm sorry, chapter 26, both uh, Rebecca and Esau were grieved when Esau took a couple of wives of, from the Hittites, uh, and um, and of course Isaac remembered his father Abraham sending his servant to find a bride for him from among his people, and so he um, thought I'm sure he should do the same. So he blessed uh, Jacob. He had Jacob come before him, blessed him, and sent him uh, back to Haran to to his um, to Rebekah's brother's house uh, Laban to take a bride to find a bride uh, and our lesson picks up after uh, Jacob has uh, left uh, Beersheba where Isaac has uh, chosen to settle uh, and uh, so we're going to pick up at verse 10 uh, of chapter 28 and we'll read through our lesson text and then we'll have some uh, some verse by verse commentary and from the King James Version it reads and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 15, And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whether thou goest, and will bring thee again into the land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob waked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it and called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give a tenth unto thee. Amen. And as we have read, the key verse again is uh, verse 15. Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whether thou goest and will bring thee again into the land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of, spoken to thee of. Okay, um, we um, we have uh, been following uh, the lineage of uh, 
of actually Noah uh, and then Abraham uh, and the promise, actually Noah's son Shem, uh, through Terah and Abraham. And we continue to follow this one family through which uh, God com continues to promise generation after generation that he will not only multiply uh, the descendants going forward, give them the land uh, that he promised, first promised to Abraham way back in chapter 12, but will ultimately, through this lineage, bless all the families of the earth. This is God's ultimate plan uh, that he intends to accomplish through the seed of Abraham or descendants of Abraham. So let's get right into it. Verse 10 uh, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Again, Beersheba is where Isaac chose to settle. Uh, he is settled in a land that he uh, has no uh, possession in. Uh, he is a nomad, uh, as is his, uh, his family and servants. Uh, and uh, he is heading towards Haran, which is where, if you recall, Terah uh, moved his family from Er, including sons uh, Abraham and Nahor. Uh, Nahor apparently decided to to stay there, and of course Laban is his grandson, uh, so he is going back to he's going back to Haran, which is. Uh, which is in the area of Paden Aram, and it's about 550 miles from Beersheba. So it's it's quite a distance on foot or by camel, uh, and uh, uh, he has uh, departed, uh, and we'll see in a minute how far he's gotten. Um, and verse 11a says, And he lighted upon a certain place, and tarried there all night because the sun was set. Now, the place, which we'll find out later, was Luz. Originally, it was Luz at that time. He named it, he renamed it Bethel. We'll see more about that later. And it's about 60 miles from Beersheba. It's 60 miles to the north. He's traveling north toward Haran. Uh, and it's about three days journey, so he is uh, no doubt still eating uh, uh, food that mom packed for him, and he uh, decides, well, it really wasn't, uh, uh, a ch he'd had no choice uh, in continuing to journey. Obviously, they had no street lights, and, and it was uh, treacherous terrain uh, to, in traveling by, by night, and so it was customary uh, to when the sun set. That's when you stopped and you made camp for the night. Uh, verse 11b says, And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Now that was a uh, customary thing to do for uh, people that were traveling cross country uh, to elevate their head somehow. And you might say, man, that couldn't have been a comfortable sleep, but I am sure he put some type of uh, bedroll or some type of clothing or something against the stone itself to cushion the hardness of it. Then we don't know whether it was a round stone or flat stone, but I'm sure there was some cushioning uh, put on top of the stone. Uh, we'll find out later why it was important to mention that little detail. Verse 12a. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. Uh, he, uh, he's fallen asleep, and most likely a deep or sound sleep. And this is a, uh, a realistic, very realistic dream, and, and uh, uh, most likely a vision that God gives them in his sleep. Uh, and uh, this ladder that he sees is really not uh, a ladder as we we uh, understand them. Uh, uh, think of them today rather with wrongs. Uh, 
but it was and, and it was not necessarily a staircase as we uh, uh, normally think of staircases it was uh, what was referred to as a ziggurat it was a spiral if you will ramp or a staircase if you will uh, go, extending from earth up to heaven and uh, there were as you will see uh, in the well the next part B says and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it now I'm not sure uh, about the significance of the angels ascending and descending uh, other than to indicate uh, I believe uh, uh, the one thing that it does is it indicates that God uh, is involved with the earth that heaven is involved with the earth we know that angels are his messengers uh, and and one other place we see uh, something like this mentioned uh, uh, we see that in uh, in the Gospel of John when when Jesus is speaking with Nathaniel after he is called and Nathaniel is uh, astounded that Jesus knew what he was doing that he was under a tree and Jesus says well greater things than this are you going to see you're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man uh, and that's uh, John chapter 1 verse 50 uh, so it, the one thing that I think that it indicates is that, that God is involved with his creation. Uh, there are angels uh, carrying on his, uh, carrying out his will, rather, uh, in the earth. Uh, verse 13a says, and behold, the Lord stood above it. And that's Lord, all caps, which is Jehovah, the self-existent one. Uh, Jacob recognizes him. We don't know how. We don't know what form he takes. Uh, more than likely, it is uh, a theophany. It's the form of a, uh, of a man, uh, probably brilliant uh, uh, in Shekinah glory, uh, but we're, we're not told uh, what form he takes or how he recognizes that it is the Lord. But the Lord made himself known as the Lord to Jacob in this dream or vision. 13b says, and said, he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Now, uh, heretofore, uh, we are we're not is not recorded uh, in the Bible that uh, God has uh, spoken to Jacob. We know God spoke to Abraham's on a few occasions, uh, beginning in verse uh, chapter twelve when He called him out of Ur, and we know that <clears throat> excuse me, He spoke to and He gave him the promises in chapter twelve and chapter fifteen and chapter seventeen. Uh, he continued to reiterate the promise that he was going to multiply his seed as the sand along the seashore. And he also, uh, as the dust of the earth, as the stars in the heaven, and ultimately, again, going to bless all the families of the earth through his seed or through his descendants. Uh, he also gave the same promise to Isaac. This is the first time that he is reaffirming the promise to Jacob as well. So Jacob was the promised uh, seed to carry on uh, uh, this uh, this legacy or this, or this promise, if you will, that, that God had uh, first promised to Abraham. And uh, he, again, same thing. He's promising him th three things. Uh, he's promising him the land that uh, he is uh, lying on, that he's about to depart from. This is the land of Canaan. Uh, and he, he really has Abraham walk the land. He establishes the boundaries of the land that he is going to, uh, going to give to him. But let me back up. He, he first introduces himself uh, to Jacob as Jehovah, 
the God of Abraham and Isaac. Uh, now we we can imagine that Jacob certainly has heard about God uh, from both Abraham uh, and Isaac. Remember, Abraham was or Jacob was 15 years old when uh, when when Abraham died. So no doubt he heard about the promise that God made to both Abraham and Isaac, but he did not know God himself. He'd heard of God, and many uh, people today have a head knowledge of God. Many uh, church members grew up in church and certainly know of God, but unfortunately don't have a personal relationship with him. And we know Matthew chapter 7 warns us that in the last day, many are going to come to God, uh, to the Lord Jesus rather, and they're going to say, haven't we done this and haven't we done that in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So the number two, the second thing, again, was to affirm the promise to give his descendants the land. And then number three, ultimately, uh, he is going to bless all the families of the earth through his seed. Now, we know how that was done, all the families of the earth have been blessed through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ through his giving his life a ransom for many he died on the cross for the world and John 3:16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and that's not the world system but is the world of people that he loved Verse 14a, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And this is the same type of uh, hyperb hyperbolic uh, illustration that God has given to both uh, Abraham and to Isaac to uh, to basically give them an idea of the uh, the size, the number of uh, descendants that he's going to have in the millions, the multi-millions. And so uh, he's using, of course, superlatives, and he's describing uh, how, uh, 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 how far-reaching, again, his descendants are going to spread in the land that he promised to Abraham. Part B of 14 says... And actually, he uses a very language, the dust of the earth, when uh, describing his descendants, uh, Abraham's descendants, that he promised them in Genesis 13, verses 14 to 18. Uh, so he is consistent in, in, in uh, confirming and reaffirming the promise from generation to generation. 14b, and in thee... And in thy seed, or through thee, and through thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Elsewhere we read all the nations of the earth, but all the families. I like all the families better because it gets more particular. It gets to the, the uh, down to the very building block of all society, all humanity, the family. All the families of the earth will be blessed, and we have indeed been blessed through the shedding of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for the world. He bore the sins of the world, the entire world, past, present, and future, every family, every individual of every family. He bore their sins on the cross. Verse 15, And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whether thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of to thee. Now, um, we need to take a minute and think about um, what's going on in, in, jo in Jacob's mind. Uh, Jacob has basically been forced uh, from home on uh, fear of his life uh and uh, he you remember he dwelt in the tents so he's uh he probably has never 
been this far from home and uh, been kind of a mama's boy. Uh, and he really doesn't know what's ahead. Never been to Heron. He's traveling quite a distance for that time, 550 miles. Uh, doesn't know what awaits him there. Uh, unlike uh, uh, his father, Isaac, uh, Abraham, I mean, Abraham sent a servant to find a wife for Isaac. He did not send Isaac himself, but Jacob has been sent ostensibly to find a wife. We know really is to get him out of out of town uh, before Esau kills him. Uh, and and so I'm sure there's some fear, there's some trepidation. He doesn't know whether he'll ever return to his home for sure. Uh, as I said, he's going quite a distance, doesn't know anybody in Heron. So there is no doubt uh, some fear. And God appearing to him at this particular time uh, seems to be to, uh, number one, reaffirm the promise uh, that he made first to Abraham, then to Isaac, but also to, to comfort him and to give him some assurance that he is with him. And, and you know, uh, one of the commentators said something that I'm, I'm very familiar with, uh, and that is there is nothing more comforting than to hear God is with thee, is with you, is with me. Uh, we see that throughout Scripture, throughout the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament in Matthew 28, 20, uh, when Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. But beginning in Genesis 26, 4, Isaiah 41, 10, 43, 5, Jeremiah 1, 8, 19, and so on. And I, one of my favorites is Joshua 1, 9, where the Lord says, be strong and very courageous. Why? For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And I, I've heard uh, people say uh, recently, uh, I know someone that's dealing with uh, with a, a very, <clears throat> uh, uh, very trying situation with a uh, with a sister that's uh, that's very ill. In fact, is is uh, is in hospice now. Uh, she's been the caregiver, and uh, she's remarked uh, on a few occasions that God will put more on you than you can bear. And uh, and and I had to uh, agree with her. Uh, on the one hand, he certainly will, uh, but he's also promised to be with you, and he's also promised that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, and he will make a way out of every trial, and that way is to trust him and to put our burden on him. So uh, this is, again, a, um, it seems to be uh, a, a, a time when God is, is comforting uh, him. Is assuring him that despite the fact that he's leaving uh, for territories unknown to him, God is with him uh, in all places. Uh, th that's another thing uh, back in, 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 in this time. Uh, the gods were thought to be territorial. Um, they were thought to only have power in certain lands and beyond the borders of that land uh they had no power uh that was some other god's territory uh but god is assuring him wherever you go i'm with you he is letting him know uh he uh, that he is uh, the god and uh he transcends all boundaries and his his uh, love and care and concern and and providence transcends all boundaries um now, verse 16 says, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, or woke up, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Now, I, I believe this was more than a dream. It was a vision. And we know, if you've read the Bible, that God often gave visions in dreams, meaning that it was not something imagined it was not just a, a figment of his subconscious, but it was actually God communicating with him by way of a dream. So when he woke up, he realized that something real had happened. 
Uh, again, it was more than a dream. It was a vision, and it was ominous, as we'll see here in a minute. But he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And again, he's, he's affirming it was more than a dream. God was actually in that place uh, as he slept. And he said he was not aware of it. He was unconscious as he slept, meaning so he was not aware that God was actually there. Now, there was nothing unordinary or special about that place, uh, but we'll see in a minute the fact that uh, Jacob sensed or realized the presence of God in that place made it special, made it a holy place, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, so verse 17 says, And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So w once he realized he was in the presence of the living God, uh, uh, there was some fear, you know, and uh, we, we, we need to, we can only imagine what it would be like to be in the presence of God. Uh, the actual uh, physical presence, or if there was some physical manifestation of God, uh, we would we would sense uh, dread and fear. 